صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة وعبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم سادتي يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما Revive your gatherings with loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Qala Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi afdal al salati wa al salam. Innahu sayati alaykum min ba'di zamanun laysa fihi shay. ليس فيه شيء أخفى من الحق ولا أظهر من الباطل ولا في البلاد شيء أنكر من المعروف ولا أعرف من المنكر صل على محمد وآل محمد Maintaining our Muslim belief, our Islamic belief today is a constant struggle and a constant challenge due to the fact that secular society summons and prohibited acts summon us from every single direction of life. Every single place that you go, there is a summoning and a call of prohibited acts in our religion. And if one were to follow his belief, in this society becomes a minority within a minority. Becoming a minority within a minority. It's a constant challenge and a constant battle for every single one of us. Because we live in a society that day after day, it is becoming more dangerous, more secular upon everyone. Not just the Muslims, but even to regular people of society. You see society go into chaos when a Disney channel actress becomes into something wild. Something that they have not expected. This, chill, this woman or this young woman is an actress all throughout her life. And a Disney channel, next, she has become... Something unpleasant. Even society today, they are confused of how fast this society is becoming secular. And it's not only in America or the West. This is something that's taken over the planet. It's makeup of planet, of the whole planet. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam says people become slaves to this world. You see people they're slaves and abid to how they dress, to how they look, to what people think of them, to, what pe to please other people's opinions. How do I look? How do I dress? What do I listen to? Who do I want to please? We become slaves of society. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam says, 
عبد الشهوة أذل من عبد الرق A person who is slave to his seductions or to this world's desires is, has less dignity and honor than a slave. At least a slave has dignity, he has honor. But a person who is a slave to the secular society, he has no honor. He has no dignity because he has succumbed. He has fallen down and come to his knees. Because of these summonings in his life, prohibited acts that summon him, he falls down and crawls towards them. Instead of holding the tenets and following the tenets of his religion. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salati wa salam in Nahj al A book that every single Shia must read on a daily basis to know who your leaders are, to know what you follow, to know the essence of your religion and faith. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salati wa salam describes 1400 years ago of a society similar to ours. Or basically he is describing our era, brothers and sisters. 1400 years ago, he's telling the Muslims that a time will come that these things will happen. People will become slaves to their desires. وَأَنَّهُ سَيَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ مَنْ بَعْدِ زَمَانٌ لَيْسَ فِيهِ شَيْءٍ أَخْفَى مِنَ الْحَقِّ There will come a time upon the Muslims that there is nothing less seen unless in society than justice and truth, unapparent. The last thing that you see in our era today is justice and truth. Justice and truth is buried so deep that people can't find it. It's placed by the core of this planet. Justice and truth is not seen anymore. It's not seen in our masajid. It's not given on the pulpit, it's not given through media, it's not given in the newspapers. Thus, people are so confused today. Most apparent in our societies is not justice and truth, but injustice and unfruitful acts. Absolutely nothing is hidden more than justice. You see a medicine commercial, the first 30 seconds, they're all about how this med will change your life. From an old man, it will make you a young man, make you a new stallion. Then the last two seconds, they'll tell you of the effects so fast that you don't even realize what, what the commercial said. You want to buy a home? There are so many clauses telling you how they will appreciate you. And then what they will do for you, what they offer you. The last two pages where nobody looks after 300 of pages that you have to flip through. There's two lines in font three that you can't even read. You need a microscope. It tells you of what has not been given to you. The untruth is hidden. The truth is hidden. Justice is hidden. Media today, you see everything is hidden. A person like Isa bin Zayed, do you know what, what type of people these people are? This person, he's an emir today. He lives the life of Yazid. He's today's Yazid. He has a servant or an employee in his, in his house. Go look it on YouTube. But every single TV station, they removed it within seconds as, as soon as it was aired. This man shoots at his, at his employee. He brings an AK-47 and he starts shooting around him. Then he ties him up and he beats him. Then he brings his car and starts to run over him. How many of us have heard of this story? But justice and truth is hidden. How many people know that 90% of Bahrain is oppressed today? Young men on daily basis are killed and women imprisoned and beaten. A city like Qatif, how many people know that it is barricaded day and night in Saudi Arabia by tanks and Saudi military just because they are Shia and the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Is this apparent in society today? Do people know of these things? 
Or is it so buried that people do not even know what is occurring around them? I read an article, and this article, as if there was nothing else going on on the planet. It's about the pets in Jerusalem that they are scared because of the sirens. And do you hear of the children being killed in Palestine? Do you hear of the houses being demolished in Palestine? Do you know that every single major company sends billions of dollars to Jerusalem? Private investors can invest in these caterpillars that destroy Palestinian homes while a single dollar can't go to Palestine to build back these homes. But how many people realize this? How many people know of these things that are occurring? And Mus a Muslim carries a twig? He or she carries a twig, he's a terrorist. But if a person goes in, a, a, in the first premiere of a movie, he grabs an assault rifle and kills half of the movie theater, he's a psychotic person. And this happens in our society. A person grabs a gun and goes into his university, kills 10 to 15 people. He's psychotic. He's not a terrorist. But a Muslim carries a pebble. He's a terrorist. A young girl at age of 8 is murdered by her grandmother in the United Kingdom. Her name's Tia Sharp. Buried in the house of her grandmother in, the, in her own yard. She gets off because... She, had, she hadn't taken her medication. There was problems in the family. She was intoxicated. She has mental illnesses. But if this, unfortunately, and God forbid to happen in a Muslim household, this is part of their faith. This is part of the religion to kill children. Is it this so, brothers and sisters? But why aren't we speaking out? Why aren't we bringing truth to the ears and the eyes of people. If it were for a Muslim, it's part of their faith. Shia channels in the, West, in the East, just because it holds the name of Ahlul Bayt, it's removed from Nile Sat, Arab Sat, and every single broadcasting satellite, just because it has the name of Ahlul Bayt. They were told, you change the name, we will give you a license. But as long as you have the title of Ahlul Bayt, we don't give you a license. Why? Because Ahlul Bayt carry the truth. The message of Ahlul Bayt is the truth. It's the path of guidance. It's Sirat al Mustaqim, the straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala adharu min al batil. And there is nothing in this life and era more apparent than injustice, untruth, and unfruitful acts. You turn on the television. Everything you hear is unfruitful. Music. That's most of the TV channels today. MTV. You, you name it. How many music channels are there when you turn on a television? The most watched programs today are like inter, er, in the E channel, the entertainment channel. Telling you what this actress wore, how she dressed, who, she, who she's dating, how much money she's making, what she's doing in her life, who went to rehab, who did this drug, who's holding a concert. Just inserting these unfruitful acts in the minds of, of the members of society. You want to be cool? You want to be noticed? Watch MTV Cribs. See how this artist is living. How many cars he has. You want to be known as a successful person? Have five cars in your driveway. Have ten bottles of Cristal in your refrigerator. This is what they place in the minds of people. And us as Muslims, we are falling down because this secular mentality is coming into our brains. So when a person comes to you and says that I'm more secular than I am re religious, he or she should look back at themselves and know that there is something going wrong. That he's slipping. He's not doing something right. He's succumbing to society. He's falling down. You see TV shows, that's all they talk about. Music, magazines. That's, 
all it's about. Diseases of society. They feed it to you day and night, day and night. Entertainment, that's all it's about. You want to look beautiful? Look like her. Even in our countries today. A girl like Kim Kardashian is paid top dollars to go to a country like Kuwait. Top dollars. She's given a private jet. Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian sell more products in the East than they do to the West. But why do you think such girls are placed on television? A brunette, she's half Armenian. So your daughters can relate to her. She's a brunette. She's brown and she's popular. Your girls can relate. You can be like her. You could be in the spotlight. You could be in the glamorous life. Just act like her. Date a football player. That's success. Date a, a hip hop artist. That's success. You're the, living the glamorous life. This is what they are teaching you every day, every day. Our youth, they start to break down. They don't know whether to listen to their parents, to listen to the Maulana, or live amongst these people, these individuals of this secular society. You see him growing up, he's a, he's a very good kid. He reaches high school, he reaches senior year. He's posting pictures hold, holding a beer bottle on his Facebook, on his wall. You see him posting pictures at the party. What's going on? But how do we not blame these kids? How do we not blame these youth? When every day, day and night, from the moment he opens his eye, 8 a.m. till 3 p.m., this is all he hears. As soon as he goes on a Monday morning to school, everyone's talking about which party they went to, who they dated. Who they hooked up with. Maybe elementary he could put up. Maybe middle school he could put out. But when it comes to high school, he'll break in. We're not made out of metal. We're not made out of titanium. We're just flesh. My mother says something. The Molana says something. But society, I want to live amongst people in society. I want to be accepted in society. And society today, the President of the United States stands up and he says we accept homosexuality in the military. They are welcome in the armed forces. The cathedral accepts this type of marriage. There is no problem with it. So when your child has, is at three years old, he'll come and tell you, my teacher is telling me that it's okay to, to, to have a crush on a boy. How do you raise your kids? How do we live in the society? What's our armor? What's our shield? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You see people breaking down. There is this fashion hijab now. Girls making YouTube channels, they're getting 5 million, 6 million, 10 million hits. What's fashionable hijab? Teaching girls how to put five kilos of makeup on your face, matching shoes, matching nail polish, matching shirt, ma matching hijab, matching lipstick, matching eyeliner. This is hijab? This is what Islam is? There is no such thing as fashionable, fashionable hijab. No such thing. But you see people breaking down. You want to be noticed? Because society is telling you this is how you have to dress. But you're losing yourself. You're losing your religion. You're losing your future. Today, studies show that 30% every five years, alcohol consumption grows in the Muslim world. 30%. That's not a small number. 93% of the world's opium comes from where? Afghanistan. Malaysia is the largest, the largest Muslim country on the planet. is number 10 consumer of alcohol on the, on, in this world. 
200 million and counting and dollars are sold to the royal household of, of, of Saudi. You might see a beautiful appearance from the outside, but it's disgusting from the inside. I was told by a very rich lawyer, Muslim lawyer in the United Kingdom, that the files that come to us, the criminal files that come to my office, 50% of them start with the name Muhammad. Now, why, why are Muslims breaking? Why are they falling? Why are they stumbling? What's the reason? What does Islam say? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? What does Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam say? He says, وَمَنْ دَعَا إِلَىٰ ظَلَالَ كَانَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْإِذْ مِثْلِ آثَامِ مَنْ يَتَّبِعُهُ there, there is a reason. There is always someone that comes and places this disease in the community. It doesn't come out, out of the blue. People don't just wake up and say, oh, let's start drinking. People don't wake up out of the morning and say, I'm going to make fashionable hijab. There's always a person that's the rotten apple. And that rotten apple is what makes the whole bunch spoiled. These are the people that we have to watch out for. These are the people that we have to watch out for. But the Prophet says that person, he should be so careful because every single person who does what he started, Allah will punish him for every single person. He will carry the burden of every single person who continued his mistake. It's not their fault. It's the fault of the people who come and bring these diseases into our, into our families. They bring these heresies into our families. When leaders start to permit music, that's basically telling a person to go put his face in front of an exhaust. From, in front of an exhaust of a, of, of a car. Would a normal person do that? Go put yourself and start breathing all these intoxicants? No. Why? That will harm my body. I will get sick. You don't think there are entrances to your soul? If, you're, if you don't believe in these things when it comes to Islam, go to the Buddhists, see what they say. That your ears, your eyes, your mouth, your private parts... Are the doors to your soul, you pollute them, you pollute your soul. Now what's the difference? You're polluting through the ears. You're listening to music. You think it's okay, you're not being affected. Slowly you are. Slowly you are. And you will be. These are the problems. When people place these diseases and these cancers in the brains of our society, in the brains of our community. And this didn't start today. This started days after the death of the Prophet. So who is to blame? The person that started these innovations. We will talk about that, inshallah, but innovations still continue today. Why do we believe and celebrate the day of Mubahala? The day of Mubahala, what occurred on the day of Mubahala? Why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi take Fatima, Ali and Hassan and Hussein and stand before the Christians? Why? Because of pluralism? Was it because of pluralism? They say, O oh Muhammad, come stand before us and we will make a prayer. The real religion will survive and the false religion Allah will bring down a fire and burn them. They thought Rasulullah would bring his companions, but he brings the dearest people to him. His daughter and his sons and Ali ibn Abi Talib. The leader of the Christians says, by Allah, by the Lord, I see faces. If they raise their hand in supplication, we will all burn. Let's go and make a peace treaty with Muhammad. Let's go pay him jizya. As much as he wants, we'll give him. But if these people pray, we're finished. 
We are finished. Rasulullah doesn't advocate pluralism, but he says we can live together. Mutual living. You could live with us. We will protect you. As long as you give the jizya, you are protected by the Muslim government. You are protected by the Muslim leaders. Thus, there's an old Christian man begging at the time of the Muslims. Amir al-Mu'mini says, Ma hada? What is this? This doesn't occur in my empire. They say this was a Christian man. He used to serve the Muslims. Growing up, now he's old. He can't work. He's begging. Amir al-Mu'mini says, This does not happen. This does not happen. We have mutual living. But when it comes to believe, there are red lines. There are red lines. We respect each other because we are all the sons of Adam. He is either your brother in faith and religion or your brothers because you are the sons of Adam. Respect that. Amir al muminin says to his companions, take him to Bayt al-Mal, give him enough for him to live a proper life and his children to, pro to live a prof proper and comfortable life. But these innovations are still occurring today, confusing people. Tomorrow, a young man will say, well, why do I have to be a Muslim? The Christian faith is much easier. Believe in Jesus Christ and I could do whatever I want. Let's not bring these diseases in into our community. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This started days after the Prophet. The first Khalifa comes, no one's praying with their hands up high. Until all of a sudden it starts. Today you turn on the television, go to a go to a to a to a to a TV channel that's broadcasting from Mecca, Masjid al Haram. You see everyone they're standing and praying like this. You go and tell them, was this at the time of Rasulullah? They'll tell you no. This is Sunnat Umar. This is from Umar's school of thought. He brought it into religion as if he is connected divinely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can choose what you place in religion. Tomorrow, I start giving things for people to follow. Why don't I just start my own religion? It's not a game. Sahih al-Bukhari, Salat al-Tarawih, Ibn Abi Ka'b says that Umar would prosecute people if they did not pray this way. You don't pray this way, we will whip you. We'll break your legs. And now you see it apparent all over the Muslim world. Till the time of Umar, people would summon Hayya ala khayr al-amal and their prayers. Go to their books, read their books. Until Umar came, he said, what does this mean? They said, Hayya ala khayr al-amal, Rasulullah said, means Ali ibn Abi Talib. The wilay of Ali ibn Abi Talib is the best of actions, is the best thing to follow. He says, move out of the adhan. I don't want this in adhan. Instead, bring as salat khayrun min al He changes everything. And... Look, one innovation, two innovations now, two billion Muslims don't even know what they're doing. Don't know what they're doing. So when you do start giving lectures about things that are not in our religion, you will do the same thing. You'll have the same punishment. You'll have the same punishment. وَلَا شَيْءٌ أَنْكَرَ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ There is nothing hated more than Amr بالمعروف. Summoning of fruitful acts. You tell someone, why are you doing this? Why are you saying, making ghiba? Why are you backbiting? Why are you backstabbing people? They've taken an offense. Wait, you think you're better than me? What makes you but in my life? Only God could judge me. This is the term that you hear from every single young man. You tell him, why are you doing this? Mawlana, only God could judge me. His parents tell him, don't do this. Mom, only God could judge me. This is what Rasulullah came for. 
to command us to come and commit fruitful acts. Leave the unfruitful acts. But today, if you tell someone, oh, be like, who are you? The Sharia police? The Aqaid police? Who are you? A sheriff? What made you think that you could tell me how to live my life? No one's telling you how to live your life. But this is the right way. If you say you are a Muslim, then this is the life of a Muslim. This is the life of a Muslim. If a scholar comes and sits up on the mimbar and, and tells you not to follow these wrong actions or these wrong beliefs, they don't like it. They get up and leave the majlis. He doesn't want to hear it. If you're not pleasing him, he doesn't want to hear it. If you're not making him happy, he doesn't want to hear it. There is no meditation sessions in Islam. You want to meditate, stand up and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to meditate, stand up and say Allahu Akbar. There is no such thing as holding hands and humming. Don't bring these silly things into our community. Allah knows best. Allah knows better than everyone. You stand up and pray. You make wudu. You wash yourself. You clean yourself. Purify yourself. And stand up towards your Creator. Who medita meditated better than Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam? One day the companions come and tell Fatima alayhi salam that your husband is dead. He's dead. We kick him he, as if he's a boulder. She says, no, Allah, he's not dead. But this happens to Ali ibn Abi Talib every night when he stands up for prayer. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is meditation. This is meditation. Fatima alayhi salam carries a bucket of water and goes and spills it on Ali. And she tells him, come on, let's go home. There is no such thing as humming and holding hands. There is no kumbaya in Islam. Let's be realists. Let's be realists. You believe Islam, you believe in Islam, follow it the right way. You want to become a Buddhist, go become a Buddhist, nobody cares. But if you're a Muslim, follow the right principles. Follow the right way. Don't stray and don't pollute people's minds. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Then Amir al Mu'mineen says, Sayati zamanun ala ummati yafiruna min al ulama kama yafiru al ghanamu min al dhib. A time will come that people will start running like Hussein Bolt when they see a alim. They start doing the dash. They see the alim, they're doing something wrong. He starts hiding behind cars. He starts running as if he's seen a wolf. Why? Just because this alim is telling you how to fix your life? He's telling you to pray. He's telling you to fast. He wants your benefit. What is he benefiting from? What is he benefiting? Is he going to earn a million dollars? Is he going to drive a better car? No, he's not benefiting. He just wants you to see the light. The prophets didn't ask for anything from the people. Rasulullah didn't ask anything from the people. Can you bring a story that Rasulullah told the people, give me money, give me wealth, give me your woman, give me a nicer camel, give me a nicer horse, give me a bigger house. Do you see this in the lives of the prophets or the imams? No. The only thing they wanted is your guidance. And when you are misled and misguided, it hurts their hearts. It hurts their hearts. But a time will come when people will start running from an alim. They don't want to hear it. If he's saying the truth on the member, they get up and leave the majlis. But when someone is making them smile, they want to hear these nonsense lectures and sermons, they sit the whole time. They start retweeting it to a thousand people. They email it and link it to a million people. Because they enjoy it. They, this is what they want to hear. وَلَا أَعْرَفْ مِنَ الْمُنْكَرِ And there is nothing more beloved to them than unfruitful acts, than injustice. Studies today say that 
Most of the clubs and bars owned on the east coast of America are owned by Arabs and Middle Easterns. Go look. I know some people, this is the only thing they go search after the lecture. The numbers. They don't go and search of the references, the hadiths. They don't go and search for the truth. They just go and see if the Mawlana was off by five numbers. Let's wake up. The Mawlana doesn't want anything from you. He just wants you to benefit. He wants you to benefit. First people break the laws. The first people to break the laws, you see us, our communities. They know every way to make a free dollar. They divorce their wives and, 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 and the government and they leave the aqid. They, their children are getting social support. The wife is getting social support. It's a free dollar. Let everyone in the community do this. Why are we spreading things like this in our communities? Why are we the first people to break every single law? Sharia law and government laws. Why can't we live straight? لا تكرهوا سخط من يرضيه الباطل. Oh Muslims, oh Muslims, the Prophet says, don't try to please someone that he is happy from unfruitful acts and becomes angry when you're doing something right. When you open the masjid for 30 days, he'll come and say, no, 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 this is wrong. We don't have the money. When he sees a young man praying, why are you praying? You're still young. When you see a young man getting, and a young woman getting married, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Finish your college degree first. Stand up on your feet. This is in our communities. And this is exactly what Rasulullah isn't teaching us. Rasulullah says, encourage one another to get married. And nikah sunnati faman raghba an sunnati falaysa minni. My tradition, my religion is to get married at a young age. If you don't follow this, you're not of me. It's on the other side now. Parents tell their children not to get married until they're 30, 35. They've done everything in the playbook. Now he wants to get married. His parents are telling him to get married now. After he's done every single thing in the book, he's ran every play, Defense and offense, now they tell him to get married. Let's encourage our youth. Let's encourage them to walk on the straight path. You have a large turnout. You have a larger turnout when there's a party. Especially in larger communities. But when it's at the majlis and the Mawlana is entertaining you, he's not saying what you like, nobody comes. If he's saying a hadith from Ahl al-Bayt, nobody comes to listen if, it's no, if there is no entertainment. If he's not making you laugh, he's not making you smile. He's not relevant to you. He's giving tafsir. Nobody wants to come. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa alih Ya'ti ala al-naz zamanun la yubali rajul ma talafa min deenih Iza aslam dunya there will come a time upon my ummah that a person will do anything to protect his social image, even if it means to destroy his religion. If it means that I will get the new contract, but the new contract is going to be at the downtown club, then I'm going to go to the downtown club and sign the new contract. If it means I'll have to have some shots with this new owner, I'll have some shots. It's okay, then I'll say astaghfirullah. If it means that I have to take off my hijab to be to get this new job, then I'll take off my job. It's okay. So as long as people see me, I'm accepted in society. It's okay. Forget Allah. Forget my religion. I'll do that that last 10 years of my life. I'll do that the last 10 years of my life. Right now, let me build an empire. The last 10 years of my life, I have time. 10 years to say, Astaghfirullah, be a better Muslim. But this is the truth. This is the reality. But how, we as Muslims, how can we start fixing things? يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ بُطُونُهُمْ آلِهَتُهُمْ A time will come to the Muslims, they worship their stomachs. 
They worship their stomachs. وَقَبْلَتُهُمْ نَسَاءُهُمْ Their qibla is their woman. He'll do anything for this girl. Just to please a girl in school, he'll do anything. You see, some youth, they do the craziest things to please a woman. صلى على محمد وآل محمد ودينهم دنانيرهم their religion, their faith is their dinar, is their money if you tell him to give a dinar he'll die that's why 10 days into Muharram we still haven't reached our, our, our goal 10 days you worship your money this is what the Prophet says you worship your money, the Muslims will start worshipping money. The beginning of the days of Islam, Muslims will come, build the masjid hand with their hands. They'll give everything they own so the masjid is built. Ten days in Muharram, you still haven't collected the funds of Muharram. Fifteen thousand dollars, for some it's pocket change, throwing pennies. And I'm not exaggerating. Why? Why are we so careless about our religion? Then you wonder why your youth have problems, why you have problems, why there are so many divorce cases, why there are so many drug cases, why you're losing your children. You're not even willing to give. You worship your dinar. وَدِينُهُمْ دَنَانِيرُهُمْ شَرَفُهُمْ مَتَاعُهُمْ Their honor is based on what they own. She has a Versace purse, I have to get a Gucci purse. He's wearing a Cartier, I have to buy a better watch. He's driving a Lambo, I have to buy a Phantom. Sharafuhum mata'uhum. They don't honor people based on their faith, based on their human value, based on their character. No, what does he own? I have to buy better. This is what the Prophet is saying, and we have to learn. La yabqa min al imani illa ismu. And from Iman and piety, only its name is left. Only the name Hajji. That's it. But when you go to this person, you look at how he lives his normal life, you see he's a wolf wearing a sheep's clothing. They're hideous people. وَلَا مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا رَسْمُهُ And from Islam, only the crescent. Only the the Fakar, only the the the, the Kaaba pendant your grandmother brought you from Hajj. That's it. You do everything. The only thing of you that's known to be Islam is the tattoo of Ya Allah on your shoulder. The Prophet is telling this to the Muslim 1400 years ago, and look at us today. Everything that he is saying is coming true today. But also the Prophet being the most merciful Prophet. And Allah being the most merciful Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He'll give you a way out. If you want to open your eyes, there's always a way out. You want out of the tunnel, there's always a way out. How we as Muslims, how can we be live a better life in this country? How can we protect ourselves? Right now when you, put, when you purchase a computer, you need an antivirus. So your computer is not destroyed. How can we place antiviruses in our everyday living? First is to know what the truth is. What fruitful acts are what's and what is not unfruitful. What is justice and what is injustice. A man comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen on the day of Jamal. He says, I am confused. Aisha is on that side and you are on this side. Where is the truth? He says, go and study where the truth is. Where haq is and you will know how to follow it. Go to the books of the Muslims and see where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi say, Aliyun ma'al haq wal haq ma'a Ali. Justice is with Ali everywhere he goes. Everywhere he goes. Follow Ali ibn Abi Talib. You have to know the right path to follow it. You have to know where you're directed to, where you're heading. Al-Batul Gharurun Khadda and fruitful acts will come to you, tell you this is what will make you successful. But that's what will destroy you. The person who follows 
this unfruitful life, he will slip and fall eventually. He will slip and fall eventually. It will come haunting him. It won't last. The most simple thing, Rasulullah tells us, Al-Mutamassik bi-sunnati and fasad ummati This is what will save you. Lahu ajru ma'ati shaheed A person that follows my sunnah, my sunnah, when my ummah becomes corrupt, I will give him the reward of a th- a hundred shaheeds on the Day of Judgment. Just follow the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, in the month of Ramadan, even if you open the doors of the masjid to give one single date to the Muslims, open the doors. If you're breaking the fast and that's all you own, one date, open the doors, let people come to the house of worship. Men and women, there is no such ruling that the woman should not pray in the masjid. Women and men come to the house of piety. The house that established on taqwa. Come, pray in the masjid. Let the doors be open. Let people come and hear the words of Rasulullah, the words of Amir al Mu'mineen. And of course, why do we come here? Ma khaba man tamassaka bikum. Hold on to Imam Hussein. Come abroad the ark of salvation. Let the torch and lantern of guidance guide you. He'll never see saddening or sorrow in his life, the one that holds your, your sunnah and follows your steps. He will be superior in this life and in the hereafter. He will be happy in this life and in the hereafter. Open the doors like Rasulullah opened the doors. Start to pray congregational prayers one by one. It doesn't matter brothers and sisters. We have to learn that we can trust one another. There is no Mawlana here. Any of you could come and pray. Learn to have brotherhood and faith in one another in our communities. Don't let the lies dissemble and break. He would recite, he who recites the Quran, every day do you think these unfruitful habits will come to him? But in our homes, the book that has the most dust on it in the house, it's the Holy Quran. How many of you can, read, can say they read the Holy Quran on a daily basis? Do you know what Rasulullah says? He says, "Man qara'a al-Qur'an wa huwa shabun mu'min ikhtalata al-Qur'an bi lahmihi wa damih." You're a young man, sit and recite Quran, Quran will become part of your blood and flesh. You'll never stray. But how many of us, adults, young men, young women, how many of us recite the Holy Quran? We know of the lyrics of of every artist that we listen to, every single one of them. You're a karaoke machine. But when it comes to the Qur'an, how many of you carry the Qur'an with you? How many of you read the Holy Qur'an? من قرأ القرآن اختلط بلحمه ودمه It becomes part of your flesh, part of your soul, part of your life. Mus'ab ibn Umair, how did he become Muslim? This man who was one of the richest young men in the time of Rasulullah. His parents owned the largest house in Mecca. Servants. Everything you could name it. He's walking in the street. He hears Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi reciting the Quran at 19 years old. He falls in love. That's it. It became part of his flesh. Became part of his blood. How many of you turn on the Quran when you're driving every day to work? Coming back from, from work. Let's create this habit and see how much your life changes. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. إذا ظننت أن الحق مهلكك فهو منجيك وإذا ظننت أن الباطل منجيك فهو مهلكك. If you thought unfruitful acts giving up to 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 the secular society will give you happiness you are wrong and if you think that 
living a fruitful life, living the tenets of Islam, you'll be lost. You are also wrong. This is what the Prophet says. Open the doors of the masjid, brothers and sisters. Bring the youth in. Bring the youth in. Show them the right path and you see how their life will change. How battle and injustice will collapse. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. And do you know what Imam Hussein offered for this religion to grow so you and I can see the light? If a person has a loved one, when he makes a bouquet of flowers, he puts the small beautiful rose in the front. It's the one that designs the bouquet. It's the one that catches your eyes. Imam Hussein has given many flowers on this night. He's given a flower like Abbas. He's given a flower like Al Qasim. He's given a flower like Ali Al Akbar. Now he's bringing the small flower out tonight to give to Allah, to present to Allah. A six month old baby, a six month old infant, he's placing it in the bouquet to present to his master, to present to his creator. It said that Imam Hussein, after the fall of Abbas alayhi salam, he came back to the tent. He looked around. He saw that the tents of the Ansar and the companions are empty. He went to the tents of his cousins, the sons of Aqil. He saw them to be empty. He went to the tents of Bani Hashim and he saw them to be empty. ثُمَّ تَوَجَّهَ نَحْوَ الْقَوْمِ وَجَعَلَ يَنْظُرْ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا فَلَمْ يَرَى أَحَدًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِهِ وَأَنْصَارِهِ إِلَّا مَنْ صَافَحَ التُّرَاب جَبِينُهُ وَمَنْ قَطَعَ الْحُمَامُ أَنِينُهُ He looked to the right, he looked to the left, he saw his companions they have all fallen on the sand dunes of Karbala. One, his head is fallen off. The other, his head on a spear. Fanada alayhi salam. Ya Muslim ibn Aqil. Wa ya Hani ibn Urwa. Wa ya Habib ibn Mudahir. ويا علي بن الحسين يا أبطال الصفا يا فرسان الهيجاء ما لا أناديكم فلا تجيبوني وأدعوكم فلا تسمعوني أو هاني أو عقيل أو عباس Why is it that I call you and you do not respond? If I were to call you minutes ago, you'll be standing next to me. فَهَذِهِ نِسَاءُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ لِفَقْدِكُمْ قَدْ عَلَى هُنَّ الْنُحُولِ O Hani, O Habib, come see that the daughters of Rasulullah are now crying. They are calling for your support. فَقُومُوا مِنْ نَوْمِكُمْ Please rise from your sleep. أَيُّهَا الْكِرَامِ اِدْفَعُوا عَنْ حَرَمِ الرَّسُولِ O the noble ones, come and support the haram of the Rasul, the household of Rasulullah. ولكن صرعكم والله رب المنون وغدر بكم الدهر الخؤون لما ضاق الأمر بالحسين عليه السلام وقد بقى وحيدا فريدا التفت إلى الخيم ولم يرى فيهم أحد ثم ذهب إلى خيم النساء 
فجاء إلى خيمة ولده زين العابدين عليه السلام He came to the tent of Zain al-Abideen. He saw him sleeping out of distress and illness. And his sister Zainab sitting next to him. Brothers and sisters, Zain al-Abideen asks his father, My father, what is going on outside? Imam Hussein starts to cry. Zain al-Abideen says, Where is my uncle Abbas? He says, my son Ali, your uncle has fallen next to the river bank of Farat. He tells him, where is Habib? He says, Habib was killed. Imam Zain al-Abideen starts to cry. He says, oh, my aunt Zainab, give me my cane and my sword. She says, why, my nephew? He says, so I can go protect my father. Zain al-Abideen starts to move. Imam Hussein comes and sits him back down. He tells him, oh, my son, you are the imam after me. You are the one that will have to remove the tears from the eyes of your aunt Zainab. You are the one that will have to move the tears off your sister Sukaina. You will have to hold the orphans. You will be the only man after me. No man from Hashem will be left after this day, after this moment. Then he starts to call upon the ladies. He says, O oh Zainab, Umm Kulthum, O oh Sukaina, get ready for turbulation. Get ready to become a captives. O oh Zainab, get ready for Sham. O oh Zainab, get ready to see my head on a spear. O oh Zainab, get ready to see my head in a dish before you. It said that Imam Hussein mounted on his horse. He starts to march. There is a cry from behind. Ya Hussein. He turns around. He sees his sister Zainab. He goes back to the tent. He tells her, Oh Zainab, you should be sitting in the tent. She says, Yes, my brother Hussein. But there is something my mother told me to do on this day. He told her, what is it? She, t she tells Imam Hussein to remove his armor. She said, on the day of mother, my mother was about to pass. She said to me, O oh Zainab, there will come a day that Hussein starts to ride off. When you see that day, I want you to kiss his chest. And I want you to kiss his neck what Rasulullah used to kiss. So Hussein, remove your armor and let me kiss your chest. She kisses his chest. She turns to Medina. She says, Wa Amma, my mother, I have done what you told me to. Now Hussein, go towards Rasulullah. Go towards Shahada. Imam Hussein sits on his horse. He starts to march. It is said that he killed more than 1,800 of the enemies. He starts to rest, brothers and sisters. Every other moment he will tell them, you have killed me of thirst, and I am the son of the daughter of Rasulullah. Imam Hussein has become tired. He starts to rest for a moment. Ya Mu'mineen. And one of the enemies grabs a boulder and throws it at the head of Imam Hussein. The forehead of Imam Hussein starts to bleed. Ya Mu'mineen. Imam Hussein lifts his Abba to remove the blood. Harmala starts to rise. He takes his arrow, he shoots it at the heart of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein grabs the arrow and he takes it out and falls off the horse. 
this is when Zainab says, Oh, my, my nephew Zain al Abidin, has something happened? I feel the ground shaking. Brothers, Zainab runs out of the tent. She goes on top of the cliff. She sees Yazid on the chest of Hussein. She says, oh, oh, Shemir, please move from the chest of Hussein. Please, Yazid, let Hussein be. Imam Hussein is saying his last moments. Bismillah, wa billah, wa ala millat Rasulullah. He's trying to cut off the head of Imam Hussein. He tells him, Oh Yazid, don't you know this is the place where my grandfather used to kiss? Ya Hussein. आते हैं असगर अली खूमे नहाए हुए मौत की हिचकी लगी खूमे Don't bande see ke upar dari aake khuli kuch rakhi khume naha. मारते हैं दास तो पां ढूंढ हटी है सर नन हसां जाते हैं पेशे खुदा खुमे आखे कभी खोल के शहर की तरफ यस से रोके हो क्या देखते खूमे नहाए हुए गुल हुआ एबीबीओ आते हैं असगर आखरी तस्लीम को खूमे नहाए हुए जान के जिंदा पिसर बानु चली लेने को रे गई बस देख कर खूमे नहाए हुए या
हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में माँ सद के गई तुम पर आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में माँ सद के गई तुम पर आ दूध पिलाऊ में मैं झूला झुलाऊंगी पोशाक में पहनूंगी मैं झूला झुलाऊंगी पोशाक में पहनूंगी गुस्सा न करो मुझ पर आ दूध पिलाऊं मैं बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊं मैं बानु अस असगर आ दूध पिलाऊं मैं माँ सद के गई तुम पर मेवारी गई अम्मा चाथी से मेरी लग जा मेवारी गई अम्मा चाथी से मेरी लग जा सदमा है मेरे दिल पर आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा असगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में माँ सद के गई तुम पर ये रात अंधेरी है और नगरी भी सुनी है ये रात अंधेरी है और नगरी भी सुनी है बोला है कोई युगर आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा आ दूध पिलाऊ में बानु ने कहा असगर सद के गई तुम पर आ अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खाहम अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खाहम सकाए शहीदानम मन आब नबी खाहम अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खाहम अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खाहम सकाए शहीद अब्बा से अलमदारम सक्का यथि मानम बे मुनि सो बे यारम मन आब नबी खाहम अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खाहम अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खाहम सक्का श ए अम्मे जवाने मन ए रूहे वाने मन दर्द तू बहाले मन मन आब नबी खा अब्बा से अमु जानम नबी खा अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खा सक अब्बा से अलमदारम सक्का यथि मानम बे मुनि सो बे यारम मन आब नबी खा अब्बा से अमु जानम मन नबी खा अब्बा से अमु जानम मन आब नबी खा सक अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला महे अनवर लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा मेरे अनवर लैला तेरी शादी रचाऊ तुझे दुला बनाऊ यही उम्मीद लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला महे अनवर लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला तुझे मेहंदी लगाऊं दुल्हन शादी में लाऊं यही दर्द है लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला माहे अनवर लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे माहे अनवर लैला मेरी गोद कपाला लगा जुल्म कबाला यही दर्द है लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला माहे अनवर लैला अले अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला माहे अनवर लैला मेरे घर का उजाला मेरे नाजो कपाला दिलो जाना है लैला अले अकबर लानूरे चश्मा लैला महे अनवर लैला अली अकबर लैला नूरे चश्मा लैला महे
wana min al husain husain um minni wana min al husain husain um minni wana min al husain kehte the shah e zaman malik e kaun e kehte the shah e zaman malik e kaun e husain um minni मौला ने सर कटा दिया इस्लाम के लिए गुरबत में घर लुटा दिया इस्लाम के लिए हुसैन मिन्ने वाना मिनल हुसैन हुसैन मिन्ने वाना मिनल हुसैन कहते थे शाह जमान मालिक कौने कहते थे शाह जमान मालिक कौने हुसैन मिन्ने मौला ने सर कटा दिया इस्लाम के लिए गुरबत में घर लुटा दिया इस्लाम के लिए हुसैन मिन्ने वाना मिनल हुसैन हुसैन मिन्ने वाना मिनल हुसैन कहते थे शाह जमन मालिक कौन कहते थे शाह जमन मालिक कौन हुसैन मिन्ने तुम फाते हा शरबत पे दिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हा शरबत पे तुम फाते हा शरबत पे दिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हा शरबत पे तुम फाते हा शरबत पे दिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हा शरबत पे दिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते अशरबत पे तुम फाते अशरबत पे दिला नाम ना आओगे तुम तो रू को सदमा मेरी होगा लाशे पे मेरी आंसू ना बहाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते अशरबत पे तुम फाते शरबत पे दिलाना मेरी बहना घर बाद मेरे पानी माया सर तुम्हें होए पहले तुम सकीना को पिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हा शरबत पे तुम फाते हा शरबत पे दिलाना मेरी बहना मक्तल की तरफ से तुम्हें ले जाएंगे जालिम प्यारी को अलमदार न दिखाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हा शरबत पे तुम पाते शरबत से दिलाना मेरी बहना आओगे तुम तो रू को सदमा मेरी होगा लाशे पे मेरी आंसू न बहाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम पाते शरबत से तुम पाते शरबत से दिलाना हुसैन शाही दे कर बाला वावेला 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 हुसैन गारी बे कर बाला वावेला हुसैन शाही दे कर बाला वावेला अकबर ए नौजवान शे शुद वावेला हुसैन शाही दे कर बाला वावेला काशी में दामाद हम शे शुद वावेला हुसैन शाही दे कर बाला वावेला हुसैनी मामे मजलूम वावेला हुसैन शाही दे कर बाला वावेला हुसैन शाही दे कर बाला वावेला 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 
شهید حسین شهید کربلا و ویلا حسین شهید کربلا و ویلا حسین شهید کربلا و ویلا